We'd done a lot of work with NGAD, uh, Next Generation Air Dominance. We had, we had ACC and the air staff and, and our uh, other geographic uh, MAGCOMs had done quite a bit of work, so we had a place to start and, and of course, the Air Spirit 2030. One billion dollar fighter. $100 billion programs, $200 units of lethality, U.S. first sixth generation fighter jet the whole world is afraid of. Designed to be the most lethal, most advanced, most formidable fighter jet in history, these fighter jets are proof the world is finally rotating into the era of sixth generation fighters. And the U.S. is developing not one, but two separate one billion dollar versions of these fighters across two separate programs expected to cost over 100 billion dollars in total. Clearly, the U.S. is sparing no expense on these fighters, and understandably so. The global military landscape has been heating up every year for the last few years. Near-peer oppositions, such as Russia and China, are becoming more near-peer by the day. Opposing ideas are becoming more opposing by the minute. And war could begin any second now. It's once again that time of the century when countries must win conflicts or deter them by fielding the most decisive weapon on the battlefield. And for the United States, this weapon is a tag team of at least 200 of the lethal 6th generation NGAD and FAXX fighters. NGAD and FAXX fighter jets. NGAD stands for Next Generation Air Dominance. It's the term used to represent the United States' sixth generation programs tasked with developing the future generation family of systems that will ensure superiority for the U.S. forces in the most challenging operational environments. According to Secretary of the Air Force, Lieutenant Colonel Frank Kendall, there will be at least 200 of these fighters in service before the next decade is over. The U.S. has two separate NGAD programs, one for the Air Force to replace the F-22 Raptor and the other for the Navy to replace the F-A-18 Super Hornet. In both cases, the sixth generation program goes beyond the manned fighter alone, but also involves the development of new sensors, unmanned aerial vehicles, weapons, communication links, and so on, all of which will revolve around the manned fighters that reportedly cost $1 billion. The manned fighters, to a great extent, define the entire NGAD family of systems. To know the true potential and capabilities of the NGAD programs, it is important to assess the capabilities of these fighters, particularly in terms of stealth, sensors, weapons, and architecture. Stealth Stealth is an advancement that has been here only one generation of fighters ago, but it's one that's here to stay. According to the Air Force's biennial acquisition report covering the fiscal years 2019 and 2020, every NGAD fighter maximizes its stealth features by taking an overall triangular shape, internally holding its payload, and having no distinct tail section, also known as vertical stabilizers. It is the first fighter in history to be unveiled with such a revolutionary design. Vertical stabilizers had always been required to keep an aircraft airborne until the concept of active flow control came to life in the B-2 Spirit. Active flow control uses computer brains on board to constantly adjust the flow around aircraft to keep it airborne, similarly to how birds fly. The result of this on an aircraft is top-level stealth and a not-so-wallet-friendly cost. This is, to an extent, justifies why the B-2 cost $2 billion and why Congress has budgeted over $10 billion for the Air Force's NGAD program in less than a decade and why the Navy recently detailed a budget request of over $9 billion for the next five years. Advanced Sensors and Weapons the immediate surroundings of every NGAD fighter will be miles wide as it would be capable of spotting targets, friendlies, and points of interest from tens of miles away. 
This capability enables the fighter to double as a surveillance, reconnaissance, and target acquisition aircraft. The sensors that make this possible come with maximum connectivity and thus the ability to share its data with every other member of the fleet, whether sixth generation or not, keeping every member of the U.S. fleet abreast of relevant information in real time. The U.S. would do away with radars mounted on aircraft to electronically configured smart skins integrated into the aircraft's fuselage. This results in increased sensor sensitivity as well as network adaptability. It also aids with communication across the fleet and ultimately enables remote control. As a result, every NGAD fighter is designed to be optimally manned depending on the requirements of the mission. Moving on from systems to weapons, every NGAD fighter is designed to be armed to the teeth with the widest array of the most advanced American guns, bombs, missiles, electronic warfare systems, laser-directed energy weapons, and loyal wingmen, which the Air Force recently budgeted $392 million for. Open Architecture Laser weapons that can take out targets on the ground, in the air, on the sea, and even space. A mix of high-performance guns, missiles, AETP engines capable of subsonic, transonic, and supersonic flight that cost over $6 billion to develop, loyal wingmen, top-of-the-line electronic warfare countermeasures, avionics, and communications are only some of what is expected on the fighter. But despite these advancements, decades of history have taught the U.S. that an aircraft will always have room to be better, no matter how advanced it already is, especially with near-peer adversaries constantly improving their military might. As a result, the fighter will come with an open architecture that enables the fighter to take on new upgrades easily and quickly. All of these capabilities and more are what the U.S. aims to dominate the future of air warfare with. But it likely won't be a flight in the park by any means because other world powers are also investing loads of resources and time into sixth generation programs that could see them emerge victorious in an interesting sixth generation race. Sixth Generation Race China, Russia, and a consortium of European nations are all sprinters in the race for sixth generation dominance, all armed with the following sixth generation programs of their own. China Dr. Wang Haifeng, chief designer of the Chengdu Aerospace Corporation, announced that China has begun pre-research on sixth generation aircraft in January 2019 predicting that the program would come to fruition by 2035. Similarly to other countries building sixth generation aircraft, the next generation fighter will build on fifth generation technology that has been perfected over the years. For China, this fifth generation test bed is the J-20. Packed with a world of capabilities, the J-20 is China's most capable fighter jet to date. The capabilities of the fighter will be upgraded multiple times over and then integrated into China's sixth generation fighter. Russia MiG-41 The MiG-41, under development by Mikoyan, is Russia's entry into the race for sixth-generation air dominance. The heavy fighter is reportedly designed for long-range interception to prevent the opposition from any form of superiority. And it turns out, superiority is exactly what every NGAD fighter is designed for. To ensure the MiG-41 comes out on top in its own quest, the Director General of RSK MiG, Ilya Tarasenko, speculated that, powered by the Izdalai 30 engines currently under development, the aircraft would be capable of up to Mach 4.3 speeds, be equipped with an anti-missile laser, would be able to operate at altitudes that border on space, and could have an unmanned version, among other more generic sixth generation features. European Consortium Tempest Tempest is a sixth-generation fighter under development by Team Tempest. Team Tempest consists of the UK Ministry of Defense, the governments of Britain, Italy, and Sweden, and then aerospace and weapons-making companies such as BAE Systems, MBDA, Rolls-Royce, yes, that Rolls-Royce, and finally, Leonardo SPA. Recently, on March 1st, Saudi Arabia showed interest in joining the program by signing a declaration of intent with the UK government. The resulting fight of the Tempest program is planned to enter service in the 2030s. As it stands, the fighter will replace the Eurofighter Typhoon in Britain and Italy and replace the JAS-39 Gripen in Sweden. It's unclear the budget for the entire project, 
but the British government alone is expected to have invested two billion pounds into the project by 2025. These six-generation programs and the resulting six-generation technologies are what the American NGAD programs would be up against. Still, powerful as they are, all signs point toward the U.S. retaining the lead, and here's why. Why the U.S. NGAD leads The NGAD program is a standout from most other six-generation programs. The American program will boast features that the U.S. has perfected, which are a lot. These include active airflow control learned from the B-2 Spirit, hypersonic speed-capable engines learned from the SR-71 Blackbird, and most particularly, air-based laser weapons which the U.S., through Boeing, Lockheed Martin, and Northrop Grumman, has made significant progress in. These three corporations have been working on a laser program known as the Self-Protect High Energy Laser Demonstrator, SHIELD for short. SHIELD will produce a laser weapon portable enough to be fitted on fighter jets. Northrop Grumman would produce its beam control system. Boeing would work on the pod subsystem that mounts the other components to the aircraft's underside. And Lockheed Martin, on receiving a hefty $26.3 million, would design, develop, and produce the 60 kilowatt plus laser itself that roasts targets like a hazelnut. There we have it for the lead contenders for most powerful fighters of the future. Fighters that would do everything today's fighters can do and much more. Fighters with the ability of entire fleets of aircraft. And fighters that want you to subscribe to this channel and give this video a like. So do that now for the 6th generation American fighters. Thanks for watching.